Hi, I'm Kathy Pickar, host of Somerset Stories, where we're preserving digital windows into our community for both current and future generations. Today's show is part two. This is a follow-up from our earlier show that I hope you have watched on Parachutes for the Planet. Our guests are Barton Rubenstein, who is an internationally renowned artist, sculptor, scientist, and environmental activist and his son Ari, who is a rising sophomore at BCC High School and also an environmental activist. When we ended the last show, we were talking about, well, we were looking at several of the parachutes, and we were talking about one in particular, I believe, was from the Marshall Islands, and we talked about how that brought home the idea that the environment is not just over there. For those people in particular, they feel it as uh, it is right there with them. So welcome back. Hi. Barton and Ari. Let's talk about that a little bit. You had mentioned it, the environment is not something just over there, but it has quite the presence. Sounds trite, but it, it's, it's something to think about. Mm. I think the, um, <clears throat> one of the, um, the confusion in today's world is that when we talk about the environment, we talk about something that's over there, like that tree is so beautiful, we want to preserve it, we want to plant trees over there, and we right. don't realize that this problem is about everybody, not just the trees, but it's about us. So we're a part of the environment, and we have to look at ourselves as a part of, the, of all the processes that, that make up how the, the world works. Um, so. It's very interesting, uh, but people feel like, you know, when they're at the restaurants drinking with their plastic straws, they don't realize that that little small luxury, which is not really much of a luxury, just to have a straw in your mouth, right. is, is creating chaos in the oceans. Um, and yeah. if they knew really what, it, what was happening, they probably would not use straws anymore, plastic straws I'm talking about. Right. Um, so that's one example of of that confusion. Um, and I would imagine that, uh, getting back to, as I was saying, referring to the, the parachute that came from the children on Marshall Islands, if one's living on a little island, I think that's going to be much more um, apparent yeah. to you that the environment is going to, damaging the environment is going to damage or destroy you. I mean, and everything around you. I mean, I'm guessing they probably, for many hundreds of years, they've treated the environment with respect, and they've um, they love it, and they they're a part of it. But it's um, it's easy to really be aware of it when you see that change after so many hundreds of years of it being preserved and living with it. So once change started to happen, such as the hydrogen bomb and other different buildings and stuff trying to come to the island, they got, they really got to see like, wow, this is really changing, not right. in a good way. Well, one of, I noticed one of the children wrote from the Marshall Islands, he kept saying, and I wasn't sure if this was um, sort of a confusion of words or exactly what I meant, but he said, stop burning plastic. And he must yeah. have said that three times in what he wrote, please, stop burning plastic, we need your help. Yeah, so basically they do have an existential threat in the Marshall Islands. The water is rising, and it, if you look at a picture of the Marshall Islands, it's a, the shape of a sea, um, and the inside of it is all water. So it's actually just a strip, a thin line, like where you, to draw the letter C. That's mm -hmm. what their island is like, and it is slowly sinking because the water is rising. On that particular uh, island that they're on. That's that, the main the island. They, the main island, right. And mm -hmm. they also have very little, few resources to, um, to cook. So they are using plastic as their energy source. They're basically burning plastic in a fire, and it burns, oh, really? and that's so how they cook. He was literally talking about stop burning plastic? Yeah, they realized themselves that they have, this is my understanding, I could yes. be wrong, but I, I believe that that's what it is, that they don't have any energy source to, to um, fire up their, um, their ovens other than using just plastic debris. Um, so 
it's very dire. Uh, it's a very existential threat. In fact, there was another island in the Pacific that the president has just bought uh, land in Papua New Guinea to transplant their entire population of 50,000 off their island. It's a country. It's an, a Pacific island nation. What is it called? Uh, I have forgotten the name offhand. Um, so it's... Um, just because they think the island where they are is going to... It's yeah. disappear. disappearing from the wa oh, rising interesting. water. Oh, um, wow. It literally is right at the edge of uh, swamping the towns. And it does swamp when there is high tides, like these mm -hmm. um, king tides that come in, or big waves can uh, wash out. Well, that's what one of the children from the island said, the tsunami. Yes. Was. I think yeah. you spent some time, it's my understanding, you both spent some time in Hawaii. Did you yeah, get that did. sense when you were in Hawaii of the immediacy of the, of the environmental um, changes, may, perhaps more than we feel here in Washington? I don't think we felt the changes in Hawaii um, as much. I know that there are changes, and I know that there are areas of Hawaii that are now um, um, underwater uh, a lot more than they used to be, like certain roads that are always like awash with like mm -hmm. two inches of water that right. never were with water. Um, but what struck us in particular is that Hawaii is really the center of uh, sustainability, which I hesitate to use that word, and I'll tell you why in a second, but basically they have, like Ari mentioned in the Marshall Islands, they've been living harmoniously with their environment uh, in a way that's been very respectful and that those islands have been are so lush, and they mm -hmm. continue to be lush this day. Um, but when I told uh, some of the locals about our project, our global project, right. they uh, hesitated when I used the word sustainability. And I asked them why, because I, you know, always open to learn more. And basically, they said that the word sustainable means it, it talks about how you use the earth, um, which is in it, in itself a the wrong way to look at it. It's not, we're not humans here to use the earth. We're here to, to live in harmony with nature. And so they recommend not using that word because that implies, it, it applies a relationship that we have with nature, which is not, is not correct. I see. Oh, interesting. Well, it gets back to a little bit like um, we're here and the environment is there. there. Yeah. The rather than idea. all being the one. And then, of course, that takes me back to, again, the parachute from Rapid City, the high school at Rapid City, South Dakota High School with, with the Lakota Prayer yeah. that refers to the interrelatedness, everything. Yes. We're all basically a unit that's interrelated. Exactly. And we have to remember that. Yeah, so really... It would be nice to use that prayer as our motto for our project, but mm -hmm. it's, it's difficult to, for the world to understand it. Right. Yeah. Um, and that's sort of the reason why we decided to stick with the word sustainability, because it has, it has enough power to it right. that there's, there's enough good behind the word, right. uh, but we still have to be careful, um, as I described before, yeah. that its definition is fundamentally incorrect. Oh, that's so interesting. I mean, you, the reason why we keep it is because you have to, you have to slowly um, save the environment. I don't know. I know that sounds kind of weird, but mm -hmm. if you, if like, if you totally like, go to the bottom like of the, the spectrum, like doing everything you can to save the environment, and like, and like, getting like really extreme about it, right. it's mm -hmm. harder to get your point across. Because then you'll be at the bottom. Everyone will be like, "What are you doing?" Right, right. Rather than bringing the whole society down there slowly, and I think that's what we're trying to do. So, after let's say a hundred years of us using the word sustainable, right, then everyone will be like, "Well, actually, we're a part of the earth. This is like when we're already much more on top of mm -hmm. um, being one with the earth." But you know what I mean? We have to slowly do this step by step. So, yeah, baby yeah. steps. And I think, well, I always felt that. Any change that is good happens slowly. Yeah, definitely. But uh, That's a good uh, and point. certainly more last, you know, whether it's. Unfortunately, we can't go too slowly anymore. Right. That's right. Yeah, That's true. There's no time to move slowly. Right. And, but uh, that's making us faster, that we all know. There's also a part of it that, um, you know, people can get overwhelmed 
as well. And I think when people get overwhelmed, you tend to just freeze and do nothing. And part of the parachute project, I mean, you were emphasizing our everyday activities. Yes. As small as it may be, we can all do, do something toward it. You know, that's a, that's yeah. a really good point about freezing and people, like I have friends that are like lobbyists on Capitol Hill with environmental issues, but they are reluctant to change to renewable electric energy in their own houses. Oh, interesting. So what, there's a disconnect there. Right. Why is that happening? Why do you feel strongly about the environment, but yet you can't make personal changes? Right. It's really odd. But, but what we do find is the, the parachute is sort of a catalyst to sort of right. get the ball going. Make, right. It activates people and It communities. does. I, I even it's, can feel that. You can feel because I don't know, something that it's very... Um, um, it, 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 it's a, it inspires people. It inspires people. It also is, it gives them a warm, warm hand. It brings them mm -hmm. into the world of being an environmentalist in a, in a, in a, in a way that's comfortable and, and yes. encouraging, I, I, like yes. a grandmother yes. uh, encourages <laughs> a grandchild. Yes, uh, and, and the mother, the mother and earth. And the mother, the mother earth. earth. You know, one thing that I am so impressed with when I uh, look at the Mother Earth Project and Parachutes for the Planet is your website. Mm -hmm. And I loved going through, well, I want you to tell us about the different parts of the website, but one that I particularly loved is the database. Yes. Tell me a little bit about the database on the website. Well, basically, it's called the Parachute Database because it's a database of all the parachutes we've collected for the project. Um, and basically, you can search for parachute, all the parachutes we've collected by different keywords. There's, you can search it by city, you can search it by number. Every, every parachute has a number. So mm -hmm. let's say if you're at an event and you see, oh, this is parachute 34, I, wanna, I wonder where it's from. And so then you type it in on the parachute database and it comes up. And also along with that, it has the stories of each individual parachute. So you really can learn about what the story behind the parachute and what community is created. So let's let's skip forward two years. Let's let's say you get two thousand parachutes and and you are going to have the display of the parachutes on the National Mall. Yeah. So I could take my cell phone and walk around and access your website or database. Mm -hmm. Is that the idea? Pretty much. Yeah, it's like basically when you go to uh, a museum and you want to learn about the paintings, number 13, and you have one of those audios. Right. Um, many of the, the parachute pages actually do have videos of, of people talking about their community. So it's not just written text, but you can actually click the video. And on your mobile phone, you can learn about the parachute right as you stand before it. Oh, well, I'm just curious. This is a little bit of an aside, but where are you storing all these parachutes? <laughs> I, you're my neighbor, and you have a lovely home, but it's not so big that it's going to store. You couldn't store 2,000 parachutes there, could you? <laughs> Hopefully, we have a garage. We have a <laughs> I mean, as you know, I'm a sculptor, and my studio is, has three structures. One of them is my studio. That's the place where we do the photo photographs of the parachutes. Oh, great. We, we mount a camera up at the top of the studio, oh. down on the floor, and as you can see in the photos you saw already, that it, there, there's concrete surrounding the parachutes because mm -hmm. it's a concrete floor. Right. And then we have a garage, which is your regular garage, and that's where we stack the parachutes on top of each other. And, of course, the parachute's very thin, so... Well, that's true, yes. I right. guess if we had a 1,000, it probably would be about three or three feet high or maybe <laughs> oh, really? oh, so I, you know it's sort of like a I feel a little bit like a uh, a, a carpet or a rug salesman you know yeah, when you come yeah. into a, a rug store to buy your story and then and the guy pulls rolls right. back five and say well maybe you like that one and that's <laughs> right. what I sometimes do when people come <laughs> that's wonderful you know we're going to get back to this in, in just a minute because I want to hear more about uh, I want to encourage people to explore your website yeah. But yeah. we're going to pause for just a moment and return shortly and talk more about parachutes for the planet. Thank you. People think I'm trash, but they're wrong. Today I'm just an aluminum can.
one day, I could be a stadium. Do your part. Visit feedingamerica.org slash hunger and find your local food bank today. Welcome back to Somerset Stories. We're here talking with artist Barton Rubenstein and his son Ari about parachutes for the planet. I want to get back, I want to continue with the website. Can you tell me a little bit more about the parachute page that you've just added? Sure. So basically, as far as making, um, I mean, if you look at that beautiful uh, parachute of... Uh, well, let's put this one up, actually, and then we'll talk from there. I want, our, I want our viewers to see. This is one of my favorite ones because when I first looked at this one, this is from Reading, Connecticut, from the Joel Barlow High School. When I first looked at this one, I did not know what I was looking yeah. at. Yeah, exactly. And I don't know, viewers, if you're sensing that as well, when you're just looking at it right now. But then look a little closer, and you see the footprint. And you see the sneakers in these beautiful primary colors. So go ahead and tell us about how do you make, how do you make the parachute and talk about the parachute page. So the main page, the Parachutes for the Planet, is on our website, themotherofproject.org slash parachutes. And if you go there, this is the main page where you go to learn about how to make your own parachute. It gives you, a, uh, I think it's six different steps. Right, and that's where that cute video yeah. is. I There's love that There's a video, video to get you going. And also on the top right, you can change the language to many different languages. In fact, the video has subtitles now in, I think, six different languages. Oh, wow. So you can change it. Uh, and people are using it. People are, we have people all over the world that have changed the language. Um, and... and and we've chosen very simple English so that Google Translate will do a, a, a clean translation for us. Oh, interesting. Oh, all these things to think about. There are a lot. Um, so basically, the parachute uh, gives you a step-by-step -step of how to do it, how to buy your parachute or how to reuse bed sheets uh, to create your parachute by sewing them together to make a 12-foot diameter um, circular piece of cloth. Right. Keep in mind that these are not functional parachutes, these are non-functional parachutes, so right. they're just circles. Right. And we use the word parachute as a metaphor right. for bringing the planet back to a safe place. I love that metaphor. Yeah. So that's what, and then it tells you basically how to create it with like, you know, the different I, the items, like for instance, this footprint, this was their own idea. They made a large image in the middle, then they, they put some, uh, some text around it about living sustainably, and then we, we asked them to display the parachute locally in their community to, um, to promote their awareness and also promote a heightened awareness of their community. So we want it to be not just about shipping it to us, but that's the last step is shipping us the parachute because right. then right. we'll display it. But we want them to s display it first in their community. And that's sort of the different steps. And it's all there. And we're encouraging everyone to make a parachute. You know, we want your parachute. <laughs> it's almost as if each parachute is its page in some ways on your website because yeah. they can submit their pictures of making the parachute. Did I not see that as? Um, or yeah. if you click on a, go to the database and you click on a, on a parachute or you click on, um, well, I guess that would be the right, you click on a parachute. You might get more than just the picture of the parachute, right? You could get a video. Yeah, I mean, there's many different, we have many information aspects to it. Some of them have videos. Yeah. Um, we try to get stories from all of them of how they made it, mm -hmm. and um, that's really interesting. And we also get actions, what they've done right? Um, after they made the parachute or maybe even before. Um, and it's just, it's really interesting to see where it's all coming from and where oh, and how is. people make it. Yeah, absolutely, it is. You know, I want to get back and to... A story, and a story of their community, too, just to get to know their right. community a little bit. And, you know, here we are, a community here in Nigeria, and we struggle to find water sources because things have changed. Before we had to go one mile, now we have to walk five miles to another yeah. source. So we hear these stories. Wow. That makes the parachute 
elevates it to another level. And these stories are on the web page. That's yeah. on the web page. You know, I, I think this was going back to the Mother Earth, the initiative, the, the, the umbrella of all of these. There was a, I remember something about uh, where these sculptures are installed, that the countries are actually sending something to the United Nations about their commitment to what, can you tell me a little bit more about this? Yes, um, before I tell you about the, the sculpture, but there is one other thing um, that people are also not only making the parachutes from that page, but we have a page now called Add a Parachute. And, you know, if you want to tell something about that, basically it's just a form that you fill out and submit information uh, oh. automatically to the database. So that's, oh, interesting. So that makes it more autonomous, um, and they can sat, send us images, and then we would just load it up. So eventually there will be so many parachutes worldwide that we'll just have the database, and people will keep their parachutes uh, and have their own sister exhibitions to, to, to press their governments. Oh, interesting. But right yeah. now, I guess, for the, the vision of displaying 2,000 on the mall, you would like to have, you would like to have a collection of yeah. them. Yes. That's correct. Oh, that's a wonderful, that's a wonderful vision. Um, uh, getting back to the UN, how did you get the United Nations involved in the Mother Earth project? Well, the United Nations is not directly involved in the project. Mm -hmm. They're aware of the project, and I've actually s spoken with the, the head of the UNFCCC, right. which is mm -hmm. the organization that um, uh, runs the, the Paris Climate Conference in 2015. That, right. And every subsequent year, they're called COP conferences. I think this year, COP24 is going to be in Poland. Mm -hmm. um, but as it turns out, oddly, Poland is not uh, re allowing art to come to Poland to be a part of the COP. So this year in September, um, we're hopefully going to take parachutes to S San Francisco for the Global Summit, Global Climate Summit, which is right. the... I call the pregame show of the COP uh, in, in Poland. Mm -hmm. And so we'll have our parachutes there. Um, so How that many will, do you think you'll have there? It really will depend on what the space the that's space. allowed. I mean, right. we'll have, by that point, we'll probably have a couple hundred. But mm -hmm. we'll, I mean, my guess is we'll probably, we won't take more than a hundred, but right. it's really dependent. Well, a hundred is an impressive image yeah. when yeah. you spread out a hundred of these uh, parachutes. What is the virtual parachute that you refer to on the website? Um, so the virtual parachute is an idea that's still growing. Mm -hmm. um, and the idea is that there's some communities that don't really have the time to create a parachute, which is uh, just the facts of life. Right. But what we do recommend them do to do is to write on a piece of paper or make a small piece of artwork um, and write what they're doing, um, and then actually post it on their social, me social media, and hashtag it my parachute. Oh, so if you go to hashtag my parachute, you'll start to see the people have just done that. Uh, in fact, the India parachute um, originally was just a work; it was a my parachute. It was just oh, a virtual really? parachute. Yeah. So I said to them, "That's so beautiful. You you guys have to make it as a large scale." parachute because we would love to have it a part of our exhibition and somehow they decided that they were going to make that that effort that extra effort to make a parachute wow. so the virtual parachute is sort of like Ari said it's like a stepping stone you know some people just don't want to create the large parachute because of whatever reason yeah. but the virtual yeah. parachute allows you to interact with social media and mm -hmm. You know. On your website, uh, when creating the parachute, do you, do you describe the type of paint to use that will be lasting or won't crack or whatever? Mm -hmm. It's a good point. Uh, we do give general guidelines on the parachute page about how to make your parachute. I'm asking for my own information. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I want to know what kind of paint I have so, to buy. Uh, you want to make sure you use, if you use, we recommend acrylics, uh, acrylic paints or house paints, and you might want to thin it out a little bit with a little turpentine so it's not too thick, yeah. because if it's too thick, then it um, will crack. I so see. you want to have the paint fairly thin. Yeah. Um, but as it turns out, <clears throat> 
you know, you can use permanent markers, but all sorts of paint have been coming our way. And for the most part, they're, they're holding up very nicely. Right. And I guess there are fabric paints now. There's that, fabric yeah. paints. Definitely. Yeah. That, that people can use. Fabric markers. Yeah. The, I want to mm. make sure that, first of all, I want to encourage all of our viewers. I hope you go back and watch part one of this program because there are many, we're showing many of the parachutes and uh, the beautiful displays of the parachutes. But I'd like to just show a few more. I, I see there's one here that it's local. It's from the Cabin John Girl Scout Troop, number 3602. Mm -hmm. And it says, look what you're killing. And it looks like they, <clears throat> the children have drawn all sorts of creatures on it. And there's one I like in particular. He looks like a little troll here who's orange with a very yellow mustache. And he looks quite unhappy. That's, that's Dr. Oh, Zeus's... Um, oh, yeah, that's the Lorax. Oh, that's the Lorax. Yeah. Oh. You remember the story of the Lorax. Right. Oh, absolutely. Thank you for yes. pointing that Thank out to me. Thank you for reminding us of the name. And it's just, uh, that's again... That's the classic story. Yes. Again, I just let, look what you're killing. Yeah. And um, what a great project for a, a scout troop to do. Yeah. We have yeah. another one here that's beautiful from Okemos, Michigan. Yes. I love this one in that it's, um, well, the artwork is beautiful. Not that you have to be a professional artist to make these beautiful, but there is a part of this where it looks like someone is rather professional who drew these flowers oh, yeah. up in the top corner. But again, the colors, and I love the way you photograph them up looking down on them, sort of an aerial view. Yeah. And then, again, the one from Reading, Connecticut, I just want viewers to look at this, but it's such a clever idea. And the whole idea of the footprint as well, and their little hands that are inside of the footprint, representing, I guess, everybody you yeah. Know, yeah. needs to contribute to this, exactly. this yeah. footprint. It's really, the, the, the artwork is really powerful because it's all original. And sometimes, like, uh, when the... Uh, <clears throat> When the parachutes are, 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 people, communities want to make a parachute, they basically want ideas, and I always hesitate to send them examples. I right. just want them to go on right. their own, and this yes. is what happens. It's quite amazing. Yes. Well, in, you know, the time on this show goes by so quickly that uh, we're going to have to close at this point. But again, I encourage all of our viewers, please go to MotherEarthProject.org and explore the website, look at the database of the parachutes, parachutes for the planet. And again, thank you, thank you, Barton, and thank you, Ari, for being so generous, generous with your time to share with us on Somerset Stories this incredibly important and beautiful project. Thank you. And thank you for joining us at Somerset Stories. Mm -hmm.